What is going on everybody? I am in the garage tonight working on the turbo diesel Jeep Cherokee. And I'm just taking a couple hours tonight to wrap up some basic things, but I figured now would be as good a time as ever to kind of explain a little bit why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because to a lot of you, it probably doesn't make sense why I would want to put a turbo diesel motor into a perfectly fine Jeep Cherokee. So I'm going to keep this really short because this is kind of a pre court cursor. And then I'm going to show you guys how far I've made it so far because there's a lot of work left to do. One of the main reasons why I want to do a turbo diesel swap is the simplicity of the motor. And as cars get more and more and more modern, they are more and more electronic. They're controlled by computer sensors, which is good. It's great. It makes things in some cases more fuel efficient. Uh, you can make more power out of smaller motors nowadays. But at the same time, that brings a lot of headaches. And then when you're looking from a standpoint of worst case scenario, say natural disaster, EMP, things like that. And I'm going to stop right there because I am not a full blown prepper, but I understand that there are risks out there. So this diesel motor that I chose to install into my Jeep is a completely mechanically driven diesel, which means it does not need a computer. It doesn't need anything other than 12 volts to turn over a starter. Once the motor is started, it will run no matter what, as long as I can get it fuel. So that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do that. So in a natural disaster, diesel is readily available easy to find it keeps longer than gasoline as far as storage the other thing is fuel mileage now I can't give you guys any numbers yet because obviously I haven't driven this thing at all yet with the turbo, uh, turbo diesel motor in it some people that I know that have done this swap are getting the upper 20s as far as miles per gallon and some even say over 30 miles to the gallon on the highway if you're just taking it easy you look at that I'm gonna have more torque more horsepower better fuel mileage, it's more simplistic, and the fuel is able to be stored longer, and I have extra storage tanks on my property. And all of that coupled together, in my mind, makes a more attractive package than the gas six cylinder 4.0 liter that was in here. So, you know, all of that being said, it doesn't seem practical to most people to undergo something like this, this kind of surgery on your own vehicle, but, I've always wanted to do it, and to me, the pros outweighed the cons, and so here I am, putting a turbo diesel in my Jeep. I'm gonna actually flip the camera around now and show you guys the progress I've made. Now keep in mind, I spent Saturday and Sunday all day with Tyler, and probably about two hours tonight, and I'll show you where we're at. Give me one second, I'll flip the camera around. Hey guys, there's the Jeep. The front end is still off. We took the whole front end off, obviously for clearance reasons, wanted as much space on this motor as possible. So just to give you guys a rundown, the motor's mounted, motor mounts are bolted in place, the transmission's in, and all of that's made it up. Tonight what I was working on was power steering lines, the high pressure lines, and the low pressure lines, which will turn on the flashlight or down in there. And then I started wiring up the uh, solenoid for the glow plugs. And, I, and my glow plugs I'm gonna have on a manual switch. And for those of you that don't know, glow plugs are needed when you're starting up a diesel motor. They're gonna preheat the pre-chamber where the injectors squirt fuel into. It's gonna help it start easier. I mean, some diesels can start without them, but even if they do, they're gonna start rough, really rough, and not run right for a little bit. It's kind of hard on the motor. Here's the turbocharger. I'm gonna be pulling the intake off probably tomorrow or maybe Wednesday. And we're gonna weld a fitting onto here for the intercooler line. And the turbocharger is gonna get clocked about 90 degrees so that the um, pressure side of the compressor here is going to be almost straight up and down and that's going to allow me to run intercooler piping and I'm going to have to find space in this area in front of the radiator and the AC condenser to mount the intercooler. There is a gap in here 
Yeah, it's kind of behind the bumper. I don't really like that idea. And then I did find the correct air conditioning compressor. And I'm gonna mount that bad boy right in there on that plate that I showed you guys in another video. But you guys may not have seen because this is just a teaser. So that is an update on the current status of the project Jeep Diesel. I don't know what I said that called it. I don't know what I called it. On Instagram it was like project Jeep Cherokee Diesel or I don't know, I'll come up with a hashtag. You guys can follow along on Instagram. Um, and if you're interested in this, this is something, even if you're not gonna do the swap, if you have questions, now's the time to ask me because over the next week, I am going to wrap this thing up and I'm gonna start daily driving it again. And after it's wrapped up, that's when I'm gonna start tuning things and messing around with other stuff to try to, I don't know, see what kind of power I can get out of this thing while maintaining efficiency. Anyway guys, I hope you're enjoying this so far. Maybe it intrigues you, maybe not, but either way, leave me a comment, like, subscribe, all that nonsense, good stuff. And guys, remember to check the descriptions in my videos and there's different ways down there to show you how to show me some support. And just remember, as far as TA targets or Keystone Carry, all of this with my business partners and everything else is done by our own hands. And I think that brings extra value to you guys as our customers and people following along with us. Guys, until next time, take care.